Hello and welcome to a short training on some suggestions that you might use for remote learning. We're finding ourselves at home these weeks. Our students are at home, but we want to keep them engaged. We want them to keep thinking about science. We want them to keep being engaged with inquiry and activity and not forget the things that we've taught. So how, how do you connect with them digitally on the McGraw-Hill High School Glencoe Science programs? That's what this video is about. My name is Jason Marshall, and I'm going to walk you through a few suggestions that you might use to do that. And, and how do you do it? How do you find your resources? How do you send them to students? How do they see them on their end? And how do they send them back to you? Let's, let's take a look at a few ideas here. So I'm at the home screen for my high school Glencoe biology program. Now, one of the things that you could use and you just may overlook is the ebook. Students have an ebook available to them. So uh, you might have class sets where students don't necessarily have a book at home, but they do have an ebook if they have uh, our McGraw Hill online program and it mirrors the print book. Uh, at any time I can uh, enlarge this page and I can read it just like I would a regular book. I even have the ability to do some things like uh, highlight some pages. If I want to highlight different parts of this page, I can do that. I'm going to highlight this yellow. I can make a little annotation to myself. Um, teacher said to read this and be ready for a quiz he will send online. So I've got a highlighted and annotated page. And maybe in a remote learning, learning situation, you have students read certain passages and maybe you have them do an assessment and create an assessment here or answer these questions after this lesson. Every lesson ends with one of these. Every chapter will end with a chapter assessment. And maybe they uh, write their answers, type them on a sheet of paper and send that to you. Or take a picture of their answers with their phone and send that to you. You've got a lot of different options for them to send uh, resources to you. So the assessments in the book are an example of some things that you could use to have students do remotely and then send those results to you. And so every lesson has a uh, lesson assessment and every chapter has chapter assessment. So I'm at the end of a chapter now and I have a chapter assessment questions that I could choose to send to a student if I wanted to, okay? So that's one option that you could use to uh, do remotely. And that's a very traditional option in that we're using a textbook. It just happens to be digital. Students are answering questions in a textbook. It just happens to be digital. And then they're transmitting to us digitally. So it's a little bit of a mix of traditional uh, classroom instruction and just sending it and transmitting that work digitally. So that, that's one option, the ebook. Don't forget about the ebook. It's still there available to you and students have it on their student side. And by the way, during the course of this video, I'm gonna to go to the student side as well to see what they see, but we haven't sent them anything yet. But just to let you know they have something on the student side, let me go to my student window here. Here's my teacher window. It says teacher center here in the upper right. Let me go to another window here and open up the student side. Now, when I go to the student side, notice they have an ebook as well. So it looks just like the one I just showed you and they can read, they can highlight, they can answer questions uh, and send those questions to you. Let's go back to the teacher side. So where are my resources as a teacher? If I go to menu in the upper left-hand corner, this is my main navigational tool and go to resources, I have a resources section and it's organized by chapter and lesson. Now notice that there are resources that precede all chapters and lessons, program resources. Don't forget about those because here you'll see things like Learn Smart, very important. Here is uh, my NGSS alignment. I have some project-based learning opportunities here that you might want to send to students. These are real world projects that they can do some research on. It's a great opportunity for students to do this remotely. They have to analyze a real world problem. Here an invasive species. How are they gonna deal with it? Uh, if it's a engineering challenge, we're gonna ask them to use the engineering design loop to come up with a creative solution to a problem. This is something that could be sent to students uh, and can be used in assignment. And by the way, whenever we wanna send something to students, what we do is we look for this gear, we see the gear, we click assign this resource, and then uh, answer a few questions, and that'll be sent to students. We'll do that in just a moment, okay? So project-based learning opportunities, and they're only found here in this first choice, program resources. Don't forget about this location, okay? 
I encourage you to explore all of these locations. Now, if we go to the unit level, let's go to unit two cell. I have some resources here. I have a web quest, another great opportunity for students to do an investigation uh, outside of class and for you to send this remotely. It's a lesson plan. It has hyperlinks here for students to go to places to do research. Has a rubric as to how you're gonna score them on this web quest. It's a great internet activity. One that can be done remotely. If I wanted to send it to students, I click on that gear and click assign this resource. And again, we'll show you what that looks like in just a moment, okay? So don't forget the program resources section and don't forget every unit. Some teachers go right to the chapter and lesson and they forget these valuable resources in these locations. Let's go to a specific chapter now. How about chapter seven? Now, whenever I go to a chapter, notice that I have all of these locations within a chapter. The overview, all the sections within that chapter, then cutting edge biology, biology lab, study guide and assessment. Each one of these locations has different resources. Explore them all. Take the time to do it. You've got so many opportunities to send resources to your students digitally, and they exist in these locations. If I stay in the overview section, I've got things like this concept map. Notice it's opening it up in Word so I can edit it if I want to do it. And I have this concept map that I can send to students to help them with key concepts, vocabulary. And of course I can edit it if I wanted to add instructions to this, I can do that. Uh, so concept maps, enrichment activities. Okay? Again, it'll open up in Word so I can edit it. Um, and this is a resource I could have students uh, learn about something, maybe a little bit more real world, maybe something outside of the class, uh, apply it. It takes it a step further, kicks it up a notch. Real world biology, another great resource that I could send to my students digitally. Okay. So all of these are print resources. These are, these are more traditional resources, but students can do them at home just as they could do them in a class. Uh, now, now, how they do that work and transmit it to you is just a little bit different, but I'll share that in just a moment. Now we're just talking about the variety of resources available to you to send digitally. Let me go into a lesson now. Get out of overview. I'm going to go into lesson three. Here I have resources. I have a bell ringer. Now this is meant to be used uh, uh, is as a something for students to do as they come into class. Gives you a few moments to check roll. But these are, these are present students with an image. They have questions they have to answer about it based on the content that you're teaching, okay? Another resource that can be sent to students. Uh, how about digital resources that aren't in print? How about things like uh, brain pop animations? Brain pop animations can be sent to students. Uh, there is a movie, there's also a quiz. You can have students send that, or answer those questions. Now, let me do that. Let me, let me, uh, let me send that. Okay, we've seen some resources here. Now it's time to send one. I want to send this brain pop and have students watch it and take the quiz. I'm going to click on the gear and then, then you see assign this resource. Now the only way you wouldn't see assign this resource is if you don't have students in your roster. Okay, so if you don't have any students in your roster as a teacher, you won't see assign this resource. Okay, it means you don't have any students, but if you have students rostered, into the uh, Connect Ed program, you're gonna see that as an option. So let me go back to it again. I have students in my roster, so I see assign this resource. Let's try it. When I do that, resource is automatically attached. And I can create a discussion thread if I wanted to on this resource. And I'm gonna call this uh, Brain Pop Video Assignment. I'm going to say, watch the video, answer the quiz questions, send me any questions you have about the content. When do I want it due? I want to do, oh, how about, how about on Friday? The expiration date is when it will disappear as an assignment from your students. I'm going to give them till Monday when it disappears. And I have to choose who I want to get this. Now, sometimes when we're working remotely, it's only with individual students, right? Billy might be sick or Clyde might be sick. But here we got everybody out. So you're going to click all the students, most likely here, my entire class. And then uh, I'm going to click assign. Okay. Now that's been sent to my students. 
They're going to be able to see it when they go online. We'll take a look at those in just a moment. But now we know we have at least one assignment waiting for my students. Let's go back to my resources. Okay. So we've sent that animation. I've got a reading essentials here, a great resource to send remotely. Like the book, except it's a little larger font size, a little more white space. There's opportunities for response, interaction, and the margins. Think of it as a cleaner version of the textbook. Uh, you have this available to send to students. Now, could you download this and save it and send it email? Sure you could, you could send an email, but a lot of districts forbid this, the email link back and forth to students. But if you think that's the easiest way to communicate with your students in this environment when we're all working remotely is to uh, set up email groups, remember these print resources can be downloaded. So send up group emails, that, that's great. No problem to do that at all. Uh, download that on your desktop and send that via email. But this is a lower level read of the textbook. Okay? It's called The Reading Essentials. There's another book that could be a, a resource that could be a companion to that Reading Essentials, and that's called The Science Notebook. This is a Cornell system for notes. Main idea on the left, keep it very clean, indent and put the supporting details. So as I was reading through the book or reading through The Reading Essentials, this is my place to take my notes. It gives me structure, it's organized. I could use them in tandem. I even have this nice handy little I found this on page feature. So it really becomes a companion to the textbook or reading essentials if that's what you want to do. Um, great resource to use remotely. Now let's send this. Let's just practice the, the process of sending this to students. Wherever I see a resource, I'm going to see a gear. I see a gear. One of my options is assign this resource. Just like before, we've got options here. Uh, use this to take Oh, I'll call this, give it a name. Science Notebook. Use this to take notes uh, from the book reading. And I'm gonna make a due date of Monday, expiration date also Monday. I'm gonna click Assign. Now, when I click Assign, Oh, I first have to choose which students I want to get this. Okay, it didn't let me do that. So first, I've got to choose students. I want all my students to get it, just like before. Now I can click Assign, and that's been sent to my students. Your assignment, Science Notebook assignment, has been assigned to the students in the class fifth period. Okay. So uh, let's go back to resources, and let's send one more thing as we do this resource tour. So I've sent in a Brain Pop animation. I've sent a Science Notebook. Cornell System for Notes. Don't forget that with the Cornell System for Notes, you have answer keys. Now this is a great tool as well that gets underutilized. So remember we had the Cornell Notes that were meant for students to fill out, right? Now, you might think, think the answer key, well that may not be for students. Well, think again. You know, some students might, might need this all filled out. Some students might need this as a study guide. This might be a great tool for parents. Think about parents who might want to help their students in this time of remote learning. So these are the notes of the Cornell Notes or the Science Notebook all filled out with page references as to where they can find the supporting content. This is a great student and parent tool as well. That is the Science Notebook answer key. And by the way, if you didn't know this, if you, if you didn't want to open everything up, you just wanted to know what's inside, just put your cursor on the title and it will open up and give you a description of what's uh, what's in underneath without having to open it. Okay, so I've sent a couple things to my students. Let's explore a couple more locations. Cutting edge biology, here I have that web quest again. I've got a full period biology lab here. I have study guides here. The study guide location is where you'll see things like e-games and um, um, e-vocabulary flashcards and just little interactives, also great to send to students digitally. So if you want them just kind of interact with this, I've got uh, terms and definitions to match the two, okay? So uh, you can send those to students, just like we did everything else. Click the gear, click assign this resource. Then I have study guides in English and in Spanish, great resources to send to students as they are going through content without you being present. Okay, 
So um, we've sent a video, we've sent a, res uh, a print resource. Now I think it's time to go take a look at the student side. So let's take a look at the student side to see what they see on their side. So I'm on the student side and I'm just gonna click refresh just to make sure everything has gone through. And I'm gonna go to my menu button over here. And when I do, I'm, I have a location called homework. And there's my brain pop. Okay, here's my brain pop. So as a student, I can read it. I can uh, take the quiz just like my teacher told me to do after I watch the movie. And then it says, send me any questions you have about the content. So as a student, I could upload my list of questions that I have about the content. That's one way I can do it. So I could take something from my desktop, and a, a, a list of uh, questions that I had, I can upload that to this and send that to my students. That's one way I can do it. I could also go to my messages. Okay? So if I go to my messages, I could create a new message. And I could say, Mr. Marshall, questions about brain pop. Mr. Marshall. I'm still wondering, you know, and I can answer, send that question, and I can, uh, about cell division. Let's finish. How does that work? So I could send that to my teacher. Okay, that's uh, something I could send to my teacher uh, as part of my assignment. So that's two ways I could send uh, my work back. I could either upload it or I could send it on my messages. Okay, so we've got that uh, available to me. I also have that science notebook assignment. Remember I said for them to take notes, here's my science notebook assignment. I'm gonna open uh, with a different viewer. Uh, some of this will ask to be open in a document Acrobat Reader. What does that allow? That allows for students to fill in those answers because this is PDF form. And here I could put my name. If my name is Billy, I could put what answers I have, and I can I can save that work and then send that work back to my teacher if that's what I want to do. Okay, so um, a little bit locked out here. Give me uh, now we go. So that's that's one way I can take that assignment as well. So two assignments sent to my students, and then once I um, I have it the way I want it, I can upload it back to my teacher that way. I can also communicate with them through the My Messages and My Discussions thread. So remember I sent a, I attached a discussion with this brain pop. Watch this video, answer the question question, the quiz question, send me any questions you have about the content. And I could write to my discussion here. The nice thing about this discussion is everybody contributes to it. So, so I could, instead of writing in My Messages, I could put it in discussions, how does sell I post that and the difference between my messages and my discussions is my messages was a personal note from me to my teacher nobody else sees this note my discussions is a discussion thread that others can comment on so this will be a long text message thread if you want to think of it that way of everybody asking their own questions and that's kind of cool in that everybody sees everybody else's questions, just like they would in class. So how did we get to where this was automatically put into that assignment? Let's go back and take a look at that again, okay? Uh, I'm going to send the study guide, okay? Let's send the study guide. I want students to read and fill out the study guide. Um, maybe not that study guide, how about something else? How about, uh, let's go into that reading essentials. I want students to read this reading essentials. Remember, this is written below grade level and it's a cleaner version of the page. And I'm going to have them ask me any questions that they have about it. So I'm gonna click assign this resource, just like we did before. And remember, we click this little box, create discussion thread, okay? Make sure to click this box and it'll automatically create a discussion thread. I'm gonna call this reading essentials Cell. Read this, then ask a question in the discussion section. Um, contribute to 
to the discussion. And I want this to be due, oh, let's say on Tuesday, and the expiration date is Tuesday. I want everybody to be a part of this. And I'm gonna click Assign. Now that's been sent to my students. Let's take a look at it on their side. I'm gonna click Home just to kind of refresh it. Now let's go to my discussions. There's my reading essentials discussions, okay? Reading essentials <clears throat> on the cell. Read this, then ask the question, ask a question in the discussion section. Contribute to the discussion. So I'd find that assignment waiting for me in homework. Okay, I go to my do later section. And here's my reading essentials on the cell. So I'd read it here. And then I could upload my questions this way, like we saw before, or I could just go to the discussion section like my teacher told me to and answer my questions here, okay? So it is very easy to send resources back and forth between teachers and student. Just remember where they are, resources section right here, and explore all the locations within the resources section, okay? Uh, when you find a resource that you wanna send, you might want to add this handy little, I found this, or a handy little discussion thread feature here. Click that box so students can contribute to a discussion thread. And that mirror is more like a class situation where students can hear other students' questions. And it's not just a you and them experience. It's an everyone experience. That discussion thread will create that, okay? There's a second place to find resources, and that's in Plan and Present. When I go to Plan and Present, <clears throat> it organizes my resources in handy little file folders. So just like resources, they're all here, except these are organized now into little file folders. So let's take a look at Chapter 7, Lesson 3, just like we did before. And notice I have a little lesson plan here. Okay? And if I go to Teach, here are my resources, just like they were in the Resources section. Except on the left-hand side, I've got my teacher content. It's my teacher's edition content. Some teachers like this view better than resources because I still have my resources, but here on the left, I have all the differentiation, tips, strategies, suggestions, way to get students to think critically, what questions I could ask them, reading strategies, all those things found in the teacher's edition, science content background. Can I still send resources from this location? Sure I can. Just click on this gear, there's a sign there's resources. I could open it up from here. But in plan and present, I have the teacher content as well. So two places to find resources. Resources and plan and present. And then of course you could create a test and send it to students as well. We'll cover tests in another video. This has been a short video as to how to work remotely and send resources to your students online. Have them send them back to you. If you have any questions about how to operate remotely, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Let us help you in this environment. Our programs are built to, to work in this environment. Let's, we'll all get through this together. Let us help you while we make this little temporary transition to teaching in this remote environment. Don't hesitate to reach out to your McGraw-Hill representative.